Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content process and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is information capture, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Capture and Manage Knowledge domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll explore various ways to get information into a repository, or to get it to behave as if it were, including the interoperability techniques of file import, ODBC, XML data import, web services, and CMIS. The goal here is to transfer captured content into the repository in which it will be stored, or in those instances in which the decision has been made to continue to manage sections of content in their original places, integrating those places into the overall flow of information so the solution appears and operates as a single entity. As illustrated by this screen capture from EMC, most of the major entries in the market make the importing of individual documents fairly straightforward, using pull-down menus or something similar, and simple spaces in which you can ensure the metadata and databases fields match up. This only works, remember, if you've already done the heavy master data management work needed to clean and reconcile them, which I know you have. An ancient way to facilitate data sharing, having been developed in 1992, ODBC, for Open Database Connectivity, accomplishes platform and language independence by using a special driver as a translation layer between the application and the DBMS. The application thus only needs to know ODBC syntax, and the driver can then pass the query to the DBMS in its native format, returning the data in a format the application can understand. It's the database equivalent to what Windows did for office printing years ago, thus eliminating the need for software vendors to develop different drivers for each and every printer, and instead just develop one for Windows. XML has a comfy home here as well. Short for Extensible Markup Language, it's a method of encoding documents and parts of documents so they can be more easily searched and parsed. Although XML focuses mainly on documents, it's also widely used to represent data structures, and many application programming interfaces, APIs, have been developed so software can process XML data. Web services, too, can rely heavily on it, something we'll get to next. Notice that this screenshot, taken from within IBM Content Manager's system admin client, specifically calls XML out as an import function. Web services are defined by the W3C, the fabulous people who brought you the World Wide Web, as a software system designed to support interoperable machine-to-machine -machine interaction over a network. Or, put into human terms, they represent a standard way to get computing systems to talk to one another. So-called big web services communicate using XML messages that adhere to a popular standard called SOAP, which stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, and is used to exchange structured information between systems. Web APIs, on the other hand, are moving away from SOAP-based communications and towards REST, representational state transfer. These allow the combination of multiple web services into new Web 2.0 applications known as mashups, and they don't require XML either. So clearly this is a moving and advancing target, and much of it comes home to roost where software and infrastructure as a service the cloud to you and me, meets the enterprise. There is one subset of web services that's aimed specifically at improving interoperability between content management solutions. Leveraging both SOAP and REST, CMIS, the Content Management Interoperability Standard, uses web services and Web 2.0 interfaces to enable rich information to be shared across internet protocols in vendor-neutral formats. Among document systems, publishers and repositories, within one enterprise and between companies. Not yet in universal use, it has advanced the cause to a significant degree and is expected to continue to gain traction. 
This module has explored various ways to get information into a repository, or to get it to behave as if it were, including the interoperability techniques of file import, ODBC, XML data import, web services, and CMIS. Having completed it, you may next wish to review the module on the leading integration techniques. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.